Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to change your life. Like I'm not joking, literally. These are the 11 biggest mistakes that I made when I was first starting my 45 pound weight loss journey. And honestly, like kind of along the way, um, there are a lot of things that when you learn about them or you figure it out, you're like, oh my gosh, like I cannot believe that I wasn't doing that or I was doing that. Cause sometimes the smallest changes can make the freaking biggest changes in your life and it's insane. But before you do, I want you to hit that subscribe button. You guys, I have new videos every single week, videos just like this, sharing my journey and story and tips, things I've learned throughout my weight loss journey and then also being a certified personal trainer, vlogs, all sorts of stuff. So I'll wait, go hit that button. All right, great. Um, you guys, this video seriously is going to be amazing. I'm gonna dive into these because I have a lot to say about them. If you're like a lot of women, if you're like me, you've probably felt like you've tried everything. Like, I truly felt like I've tried everything, I did everything, and I was spinning my wheels for so long, not able to lose weight, feeling super stuck, super confused, really frustrated. I mean, when I say I tried everything, like if you guys have watched my weight loss stories, you've heard me talk about this, but I did Weight Watchers, I did Atkins, I did South Beach Diet, I did the Lemon Diet, like the Master Cleanse, the Coffee Diet, I mean, like everything you can imagine. Super restrictive, cutting full food groups out. And maybe I'd see results like for the short term, but my mood would be very bad. I'd feel like I was going crazy. I'd be angry and hangry and hungry and just all the things you don't wanna be. And then I'd end up gaining all that weight back. So these are all the things that truly made an impactful difference that have allowed me to not only lose all that weight, but keep it off for, I think it's 10 years now, like coming up in this fall, which is just so insane to me. Um, because I never thought that my journey would end here but it is, it's not even ending, but I didn't think I'd ever get to this point. Um, and it's so incredible to look back and hopefully by me sharing this, you guys will be able to avoid some of that pain and some of that struggle and wasted time and get right into making healthy lifestyle changes. So the first thing for me, um, this is definitely something that held me back and caused me to really not reach any of my goals for a long time and it was that I was expecting to fail. And I think a lot of us often expect to fail because that's all we know. Like for me, I had failed all of these diets so many times. In retrospect, like I say this often, but they failed me. They're not set up to be a lifestyle to actually create real change. But when you go into something and your mindset is kind of in the, like really like focused on the fact that like, mm, this is probably not gonna work. Oh, I feel like I've tried everything. I failed every time I've done this before. Why is this gonna be any different? All of that negative self-talk does not set you up for success. Um, and it really can impact not only your ability to make real change because you're kind of holding yourself down and limiting yourself, but it also can create increased cortisol levels, stress levels, which all play into your ability to like actually burn fat and live a healthy lifestyle. So all of those thing com things combined, like it really does cause a huge roadblock and problem in you actually making those changes that you're trying to. So for me, I had to realize like, okay, everything I had done up until now didn't work. Um, whether I failed it, they failed me, whatever it was, it wasn't working. So I had to do something different. And because I was doing something different, I was able to go into it saying, I'm a different person, my mindset is different, I'm gonna give this my all, I'm gonna take it one step at a time, and I am going to make change. And having that positive self-talk before you start any new routine is really gonna be the key to helping you actually be able to do it, stick with it, and make it your lifestyle, not just a short-term fix. The second one, this one is more like about actually something that you're physically doing every single day, and that is avoiding drinking your calories. I am a huge liquids person. I usually have like multiple beverages in front of me. Ryan always makes fun of me on vacation because I'll have like a coffee, a water, a green juice, a champagne, like everything. Um, but calories aren't just in the foods that we eat. And you guys know I am not a calorie counter. I never did that in my actual weight loss journey because I had tried that with the Weight Watchers and other programs that just drive you insane and make you obsessive about everything you're putting in your body. And that's not a way to live. That's not a healthy lifestyle um, that can make you crazy. 
and stress you out more again, increase cortisol levels. But we do have to be aware of how we're fueling our body, where nutrients are coming from, where those calories are coming from, because at the end of the day, they add up and it's just kind of science. So I really had to look at all of those excess things I was having throughout the day. And when I first started my journey, it was multiple glasses of wine every night because I worked at a wine bar and it was two coffees with extra creamer and sugars and the creamers I was using had like so much added sugar in them and um, just calories in and of themselves that I didn't necessarily need. So I had to kind of take a moment and start realizing, wow, like I'm getting so much excess of calories that aren't really adding any value to my body. Um, they're not really adding any nutrients from all of these different liquids. So if you're a soda drinker, uh, sports drinks, anything like that, Yes, sometimes a sports drink can have electrolytes and maybe you need those in different moments. But most of the time, they're just extras. Um, and there's a lot of sugars that we don't probably need in our body. So taking a look at the liquids that you're consuming every day and seeing if you can make some adjustments is gonna be a big game changer. Truly for me, cutting out wine during like those weeknights when I was drinking it all the time, I mean, that in and of itself is like, say you have even one glass a night, 100, to 150 calories times seven, you're talking like almost an extra like 800 or 1,000 calories a week. Like that's a lot when you start cutting back on those things. And again, those are just things we don't need. I love wine. I love it so much. I love having like a glass of wine every once in a while. However, I don't have to have it every single day. So it's really like assessing those things. Like I would rather have my coffee in the morning. So I choose to have that and then making adjustments to what I'm putting in my coffee. So I'm not adding a bunch of sugary, syrupy creamers and things like that. Number three, since we're talking about sugars a little bit and kind of added sugars, sugar substitutes can totally sabotage your goals too. So part of some of those diets that I tried in the past that like were disastrous were things like the South Beach diet or Atkins where it's totally fine to have all the sugar-free candies and all the sugar-free ice creams and drinks as long as it was diet or had Splenda or something in it. So I was like downing packs of candy all the time, you guys. That's not okay. Like that's not healthy, even though it was sugar-free. Like there are so many chemicals in there, sugar substitutes. So one, it jacks up your stomach. And I thought that was normal, not normal. Um, but besides that, the chemical reaction in your brain still responds as if you were having sweets. So it causes you to crave the sugary things more and whether you're turning to the sugar-free ones that are filled with like chemicals and stuff, or you end up turning to actually sugary candies and things more and more often. So it really actually is probably the worst thing you could possibly do. I know a lot of people when they're trying to lose weight, they're like, okay, gotta get rid of sugar. And then they turn to everything that's diet with Splenda or anything else in it. Um, it's just not gonna be good for your body. It really will sabotage your goals. So what you can do, um, obviously not all sugar substitutes are created equal. Uh, things like stevia and monk fruit are absolutely better options and they don't have the same insulin response as like a lot of these other ones do. However, like again, it's still in moderation. So some people are totally fine going cold turkey. That was never my style. So I would slowly start swapping if you're using like a Splenda or an Equal or something like that all the time, start swapping it out for a monk fruit or a stevia and then start to reduce that. If that means, you know, in your coffee every day, you're used to putting two big spoonfuls of that sweetener in there, let's start to go to one and then to half of one and eventually maybe none. Those little changes over time really will make a big difference and it'll help you eliminate those sugar cravings so that you're not going after all the sugars like needing them so bad, like a chocolate bar or whatever it is. Um, and that really helped me. So now, like since I've done that over the years, I've gotten to a point where, yeah, every once in a while I'm like, oh, I really want some dark chocolate or something sweet and I can enjoy it and there's no guilt associated with it. It's not gonna ruin my body or my goals or anything like that. Like it's just finding a healthy balance and knowing that like, wow, it's really awesome. I don't have these insane cravings anymore because I'm not consuming those sugars all the time or those sugar substitutes, but I can have it and be satisfied and enjoy it and move on. So if you feel like, okay, I've been working out, I've been eating really healthy and you truly know that those things 
are accurate. Like you actually are doing those things and you're still not seeing results or maybe not in the time that you're wanting to. Maybe even in the first few weeks, you're like, I feel heavier or I weigh myself and I am heavier. And that can be really frustrating and really disheartening. And I get it because I've been there. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually weigh about 10 pounds more, maybe even a little more than that right now than I did when I first lost all my weight, but I'm actually smaller right now. So basically what happens, muscle does not weigh more than fat, but muscle is denser than fat. Like a pound is a pound, right? But it's much more dense. So five pounds of muscle could be like, take up this much space in your body and five pounds of fat could take up like this much space of your body. Here's the thing, when you first start working out especially and you're building muscle, a lot starts to happen in your body. Your body is adjusting. So as you're building that muscle, you maybe haven't started to burn all that excess fat yet, but as you build muscle, things happen like little muscle tears, inflammation, water retention. So those first couple weeks, your body is like, ooh, wow, this is new and exciting and I'm like starting to make changes and I have these little muscle tears, which are normal. That's how you repair and rebuild and get lean muscle, um, but it's an adjustment period. So it's not going to go like week one, I haven't done anything. Week two, I started doing this routine and all of a sudden I should just see results, right? Your body has to change and start to work through all of these things that are happening internally. So I know that mentally that sometimes can be hard, but give yourself three, four weeks and then check back in. And this is why I always talk about taking photos and taking measurements over weighing yourself. Because weighing yourself only gives you this much of the story. And even if you have like a body composition skill, which I love, and it's a great way to have like a baseline, it still can like be frustrating if you're like, wait, I'm working out and eating healthy. Why is my weight not changing? Or why did it go up a pound, right? So taking measurements and photos, you can start to actually physically see the changes that are happening in your body. So after four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, even if your weight hasn't moved a lot, your body may have changed drastically. Your pants might fit better. Like all of those things start to happen. So yes, you may be building muscle and that may be why you're not losing weight, but that doesn't mean that those results are not coming. Number five, something to consider, you might have an underlying issue. So again, this is if you truly know your nutrition's been on point, your workouts have been on point, and three, four, five weeks have gone by and you're like, man, like I don't feel any different. I'm not seeing any difference. Like what is going on? So a lot of you know, I have hypothyroidism. I was diagnosed when I was 11 years old. Um, it's something I've dealt with my entire life. I use it as a crutch for years and years and years as to why I wasn't losing weight um, in an unhealthy way. But it does have a lot of impact on my weight, my ability to lose weight, how quickly I gain weight, all of those things are impacted because your thyroid kind of controls your entire body and metabolism. Um, so if you feel like you're kind of spinning your wheels and you, you're doing like a mental check, you're being true, totally honest with yourself, and you're still like, you know what? I like, no, like I'm doing everything and I'm still not seeing any change then maybe there's an underlying medical condition, maybe something like hypothyroidism, maybe something else, maybe hormones are just slightly off, but it's worth talking to your doctor about. And I think that that's the biggest thing, like you have to be your own advocate. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I talked about this recently because for the last like six months or so, I had gained some weight and I just like could not, like no matter what I did, it was not budging. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And I felt fatigued and tired. And I've been on thyroid medication forever um, and I've played with it. They, they've adjusted it over the years as things change, but like I had just gone in like six months ago or so, so it should have been fine. Um, but I just knew my body was off. And so I went in, got my blood work done again. And sure enough, my levels were so off. Like my T3 was super, super low. Um, and so just like in the last two weeks, I've been on new medication for that, but you just never know. So I think it's really about evaluating, like checking in with yourself. How honest are you being? Are you doing all the right things, but then you're also eating like bowls of ice cream every night? Like maybe that's playing into it. Or if you really, really are, there is always that possibility. So definitely worth talking to your doctor or a naturopath or someone about, especially if you're feeling other symptoms too, like fatigue and stuff. 
Number six is the freaking best, most important one that I couldn't believe was the case for myself. And every time I talk to women, it is like shocking how much pretty much all of us have or are doing this or not doing this. And it really is hindering us from reaching our goals. So what I'm gonna do, because I could talk about these forever, and as I'm thinking about it, I think, I'll, I think I'm gonna do a part two to this video. Um, so this is gonna be the last one I'm gonna share in this video, but I'm gonna put a link down below to a blog post with a printable that has all 11 of them so that you don't have to like write down notes and you can get the other tips there too. So number six, here we go you guys. Are you ready for it? Number six, you might not be eating enough. You might not be eating enough. I know. When you think about like excess weight or not being able to lose weight, the first thing automatically all of our brains go to is, I gotta eat less. I need to eat less to lose weight. It's not always the case, you guys. I eat so much more now than I did when I was 45 pounds heavier. I'm not joking you. I eat more throughout the day. If you guys have ever tried my meal plans, the one of the biggest comments I get from girls all the time is like, oh my gosh, it's so much food. It's nuts how much we starve and deprive our bodies all the time when we're trying to lose weight. And it's not healthy, like it's so bad. It can mess up your metabolism, especially if you're doing really, really low calories long-term. But even beyond that, like I was just eating a lot of the wrong food. So even though it was maybe only like one big meal a day because I thought that that was the best way to lose weight at times, that one meal might have 3,000 calories. So I'm like eating less, you know, a burger and fries and all this stuff, but it's way too much calories and all I get is one meal and then I'm hungry the rest of the day. So what happens when you're not giving your body enough fuel, it kind of freaks out because it doesn't know when it can expect to get food again. So it almost goes in like a starvation mode and it can cause you to hold on to excess weight. So oftentimes when you are trying to jumpstart your weight loss or kickstart your metabolism and get your body working for you, you need to fuel it. Like our bodies need fuel. They need carbs, they need proteins, they need all of our healthy fats, vegetables, fruits, all of those things are going to help our bodies be able to function so that when you're working out and as you're trying to work to have a healthier lifestyle and reach your goals, it actually can do it. Like allow your body to work with you instead of like punishing it. And that's what I did for years and years and years and years. I just punished it. I would try to go all day without eating. And then at night I would like overdo it. And it was horrible where now I eat throughout the day. I have healthy meals that are filling and allow me to have all the different components of that fuel that I need. So I have energy to do the things I wanna do and to work out and just like in life. Like no wonder I was freaking tired all the time. I wasn't even working out, but I was exhausted. I'm like, oh well, because I didn't really ever eat and when I did, I ate fried garbage. I mean, it makes sense, right? So I want you to take a look at what you're consuming every single day, how often you're eating, and really ask yourself, like, is this enough? And if you need help and guidance, that's why I have my meal plans. That's why I have my guiltless nutrition guide. They're there to help you learn how to intuitively eat, how to fill your plate, what your body needs so that you can be successful in reaching your goals and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It's not about a diet. It's not about like a two week fix. It, it's about really allowing you to learn how to take care of your body. So that was my top six of my top 11 reasons why you're not losing weight and the biggest mistakes that I've made. Like you guys, so crazy. The other five are just as important and really surprising. Some of them you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I never even thought about that. So make sure you hit that link below, go check it out. If you guys like this video, if you found it helpful, hit the thumbs up. That tells me to make more videos like this for you guys. It also tells YouTube that it's a great video and we'll share it with more people. So hopefully more women can get this advice and start making changes that are gonna really, really help impact their overall lifestyle. I love you guys so much. We are in summer shape up right now. So if you haven't signed up for the challenge yet, the link is down below. It's our free eight week fitness challenge. It's just such a great place to start too. If you're like looking for something to do for the summer, to stay positive, to stay on track and have a support system of thousands and thousands of women who have just like got your back, 
This challenge is freaking amazing. So make sure you guys get signed up. And if somehow you miss subscribing in the beginning of this video, hit that red button, subscribe. I have new videos every single week, sometimes twice a week, vlogs and lots of tips and chats of me just like giving you guys all my advice. So hopefully again, you can make awesome changes, make them faster and without as much pain and sadness because it really sucked. So if you, all, if you haven't watched my story yet, go check that out too. Um, I think that's it. All right, you guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.